Martin Buber comes at the end of my chapter on Jude chapters on Judaism. At the end of each section of my book, I have um, a chapter dealing with one of the prominent uh, figures of the 20th century who belong to a particular religious tradition. And Buber is a figure who most people have heard about, at least in the academic world. He was a very influential philosopher in the, 19th, in the 20th century. He was a very influential Jewish thinker. But what does he really believe? This is a, a difficult question because Buber himself isn't terribly clear. He's Jewish. He's extremely proud of being Jude Jewish. Um, he actually married a Christian woman who never um, renounced her Christianity. Uh, they moved to Jerusalem in the 1930s, um, fleeing from the Nazis, of course. And in Jerusalem, his wife apparently, and I was told this by Rabbi Neil Rose, who I worked with at one point, and his wife would wander around wearing a big cross, which many Jews found offensive, but uh, she insisted on doing this. Um, in her early days, she hadn't been particularly committed to Christianity. The, the accounts of this are that she was more of a secular German. But um, when she got to Jerusalem, apparently she sort of associated herself, at least, with Christianity and wore this cross to irritate people. Uh, that was Neil's interpretation of it. Um, he was influenced very strongly by, in his youth, by three things. One was German culture. And I think the power of German culture is something people, in North America at least, don't take into account. What we're thinking about are people like Mozart and Beethoven, um, the great artists like um, Caspar David Friedrich and others. Um, there is this cultural tradition. There's dominating the cultural tradition are the writings of Goethe and uh, other German um, authors, uh, poets like Schiller. All of these things impacted Buber very strongly. He grew up in Vienna and uh, he talks about this culture and how deeply affected he was by it. So he identified very strongly as a German, not particularly as a Jew. And this was common of many Germans, uh, many German Jews, that they first and foremost were German and they happened to be ethnically Jewish. And to a large extent, their religion was a form of, um, one might say, Jewish agnosticism. They were Jewish, they couldn't escape from it, but they, they didn't really put much emphasis on God. Um, but during his school holidays as a child, he was sent to an uncle who lived in Silesia. And when he went there, um, near where his uncle had an estate, there was uh, an Hasidic Jewish group. And he used to watch their ceremonies. He was an outsider, but he was impressed by their religiosity. Uh, in later life, he gradually developed a, a consciousness of being Jewish. And this came after... Uh, one might say his flirtation with Nietzsche and with um, various types of German philosophy, but particularly Nietzsche. And Nietzsche had a deep impact on him. Uh, and then he found Nietzsche really didn't satisfy him. And he returns to a form of Judaism. He's influenced by the Jewish mystical tradition, by the Hasidic tradition. He's influenced by the Bible, um, he's influenced by Jewish practices, but none of them really seem to settle with him. Uh, he writes lots, lots of books about Judaism, but there's a certain enigmatic um, feature to these writings. That they're, ne they're never quite clear uh, as to exactly what he's, he's getting at. Um, what he does say very clearly is that he's Jewish and he talks about eternal Israel. Um, and here, I think, another figure that had influenced him, who also influenced uh, Nietzsche very strongly, was Feuerbach. Feuerbach and uh, D.F. Strauss, the biblical critic, shared a common um, experience in terms of religion. Both of them had rejected Christianity. They saw Christianity as failing, as it being a religious projection, as something that they couldn't believe in. And instead they became to believe in a religion, what one almost might say, a religion of race or a religion of um, ancestral um, heritage. Now, 
when one says race, everyone immediately thinks about the Nazis. But Feuerbach actually, in one of his writings, talks about um, our heritage. And he has a long paragraph when he talks about, well, I can't really talk about just human heritage. I've got to talk about my German heritage. I've grown up with this language. I've grown up with this landscape. I've grown up with this culture. Um, Strauss went even further. In his last book, uh, The Old Belief and the New, he says we can't believe in the old belief. This is Christianity. We've got to believe in a new belief, and this new belief for him is cultural. And he talks about German literature, Goethe and so on. He talks about music, Mozart and Beethoven, and all of these things, and art. And it is this culture that gives a people their own national consciousness that goes on over time. And uh, these ideas find expression in the book Daniel Deronda, written by George Eliot, the British author. And she tells the story of a young man who doesn't really know he's Jewish, but eventually discovers he's Jewish. And at the end of the book, he goes off to Israel, to um, Palestine, as it then was under Turkish rule, to join Jewish settlers in Palestine. Now, George Eliot, again, was um, an agnostic. Uh, she, in fact, was the translator of Feuerbach into English. And uh, there is this tradition, but towards the end of her life in that novel, she embraces a sort of um, ethnic, um, religious, sociological, cultural uh, religion. And it is this type of religion that appears to have affected Buber because Buber has a dialogue where he's corresponding actually with a fundamentalist Christian who's trying to convert him. And Buber says very clearly, he simply can't believe in the stories of the Bible. The stories of the Bible um, are simply not moral, some of the stories. And Buber can't go along with that. But what he does go along with very strongly is this sense of identity through a people that he represents his ancestors in some very real way. And his children and his grandchildren will represent him. That there is this continuity of belief found in eternal Israel. And he talks about eternal Israel and it appears to be a sort of almost ancestral religion that he's embracing. Not traditional or orthodox Judaism. I think most Jewish scholars would agree with this, that Buber is a Jew, but he's a different type of Jew. Maybe one could say he's a new Jew, uh, presenting a 20th century type of Judaism that's reacting to German philosophy and to the growth of um, anti-religious traditions. And he finds it in his own identity, which is very strongly Jewish. Um, and he finds it in a communal, I, thou, um, existence or reality. And significantly, his phrase, I, thou, comes straight out of Feuerbach, who had the same sort of idea.